gentlemen, welcome to ACE 2018. I think we'd like to start the session today. My name is Ms. Sharina Balaratnam. I'd like to welcome you to the first session at ACE 2018. We are absolutely delighted to be cordially invited by Roger Boxham and his team at Aesthetic Care UK to present to you on Intensive, which is a novel, unique radio frequency microneedling technology for intensive facial rejuvenation. I would like to welcome my team, and I would also like to introduce to you my dear colleague, Cheryl Marshall Williams, who will be carrying out a live treatment demonstration using the technology whilst I present to you. Before I start, I'd like to get a hands up of who is currently using microneedling in their practice. Okay, we've got a good show of hands. So, I'd like to introduce to you a couple of concepts, really. So why I introduced microneedling into the treatment portfolio in the clinic, how we did it, because when you're starting off a new clinic, it's important really to consider the treatment parameters for why you're bringing something new. And we'll talk about the technology, why it's important to consider microneedling and radio frequency to your treatment portfolio in the clinic. We'll talk about the data that has brought this into um, FDA approved. And we'll talk about how it actually fitted into the clinic and how we brought it in over the last one to three years. It's important to consider patient selection because everybody needs a certain refinement when it comes to their main patient concerns. We'll talk about how the treatment can be hugely personalized and tailored to each facial area as well as the body area. And we'll also then cover not just the clinical um, results produced by the company themselves, but our patient results that we've obtained in the last 12 months since we introduced, introduced Intensive to the clinic. So, a little bit about me. My background comes from reconstructive plastic surgery. I spent 12 years in the NHS, and the last six years was really focused on um, specialties such as burns, reconstruction, wound healing, collagen modeling, and how these treatments have come into play to improve not just functional uh, uh, outcomes for patients, but also the ideal aesthetic result. <clears throat> so we want to think about, in our arena, the non-surgical arena, how can we introduce these concepts to benefit our patients? Uh, my master's was also focused heavily on skin remodeling and, uh, and I'm very privileged to be able to share with you our results today. I first started my clinic three years ago, so we'll talk about how I introduced the, the first part of the platform, which was the tightening and the fractionated skin resurfacing part of this technology. And in the last 12 months, we recently brought in the Intensi. So it's been incredibly useful how you can build something like this into your, your new clinic practice and take it from there to really tailor how you bring things into your clinic for the patient. So when I think about our patients, what do really are they presenting with? I would say, apart from deep volume replacement, as well as from injectables, skin conditioning treatments, I see a lot of skin quality issues among their, amongst our patients. They present to me with fine lines, textural lines, deep set lines. They also present with sagging skin, loss of elasticity, Crepiness. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to the patient saying, I'm just starting to sag. I feel like my skin concerns are really causing my face to head south. So we're looking at skin quality here. So we're looking at refinement, lifting, firming, tightening. So what are the other conditions that cause these? Firstly, it's our genes. You know, genetic predisposition has a lot to do with it. You know, we're a biological clock, we're ticking away. And there's other factors that come into play as well. And we call that accelerated aging patterns. A lot of it is contributed by very simple things like diet, lifestyle, cigarette smoking, the environment which we live in. So when we consult our patients, we should always take into consideration all of these things during the medical consultation. So when we take a full history, we have to ask our patients, what about things like your past medical history? Are you fit? Are you well? Do you smoke? How many cigarettes do you smoke? Even something as far as when did you stop cigarette smoking has a huge impact 
in how this process is going to play. We see a lot of patients coming in from London, for example, our clinic is in Buckinghamshire, heavily sun damaged, lots of alcohol, even something like pollution, you know, contributes a lot to the general health of the skin. Even something as simple like air conditioning. So when we think about skin quality, which I see a lot of in the clinic, creates a lot of stigma to patients who have poor skin health, maybe due to acne scarring, for example. So it says a lot about how we feel. It conveys a sense of emotional well-being. I think a lot of us have seen our patients with acne scarring. They walk with their hair along their sides. So we can trigger something onto the skin that can regenerate the skin. We're on to a winner. So I would always say it goes beyond skin deep. These are common causes of what we call accelerations in skin aging. The commonest patient that presents to our clinic has to be stress-induced accelerated skin aging. We see a lot of that. Other conditions such as ultraviolet damage. This is a classic case of ultraviolet damage in uh, an American lorry driver. And other common things that we see, mainly among the younger patients, sugar causing glycation in the skin. It causes that cross hatching in the skin. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how that looks like. And then obviously cigarette smoking, it seems to be going out of fashion, but it causes, especially in us women, that classic hairy oil line that we see. And something like microneedling can really trigger the collagen remodeling in the skin to get some great results. So when I look back at the three commonest skin concerns and what our patients present with, we think of three things. We think of color, so I call it the reds and the browns, vascular concerns, ultraviolet uh, radiation causing skin pigmentation. And then we think of texture. All of us have got patients presenting with wanting refinement in their pore size. Women are obsessed with their pores. We look in the mirror, we want that refinement. Then we think of lines, wrinkles, and we think of sagginess. All women complain of sagginess at a certain point, wanting more definition in their jawline. And then finally, we think of that <coughs> loss of elasticity, the crepiness in our skin. And Cheryl uses the word stronger skin. We all want stronger skin. We forget about the face. We forget about the body. And don't forget, we get loss of elasticity in other parts of the body. I have patients presenting to us using words like, my skin feels detached from me. Can you reattach it non-surgically? That's very, very deep. So, when I thought about what technology we're going to introduce into the clinic, we hear of lasers, we hear of lifting devices, so I had to think of something that could hopefully tackle all three of those main presentations. So I've had the privilege of working with a number of different radio frequency platforms over the last eight years. I was particularly interested in the NDMAT technology for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's a multi-platform. It allows you to grow within your practice. We first started with something called the tightening and contouring part of the technology. I do urge you to meet the team at Aesthetic Care, which are just outside. They can introduce you to the other angles of the platform. So I knew that the tightening was going to give me bulk heating of the skin so that we can get improvement in elasticity, firmness, contraction, all of that. So we can go deep into the skin to give volumetric heating. The other thing that was particularly interesting about radio frequency is, is colorblind. So where we are seeing a multi-ethnic um, population, whether it's Fitzpatrick 1 to 6, it can be used in ultimately all skin types. Huge benefit to a patient population that is becoming increasingly diverse in who we see. And then finally, we think about how natural this is. You're triggering something that is very natural to our whole systems, a natural wound healing response. So coming from a reconstructive birds and uh, plastic surgical world, it's a no-brainer. If we can heal from within, we're going to get some long-lasting results. I have a lot, large number of patients referred to me by surgical colleagues, patients who are potentially undergoing facelifting procedures. We can lift and tighten the skin, but if we can get the actual skin stronger, you're going to get much more longer-term benefits. <clears throat> so when we first opened up the clinic in uh, three years ago, we started off with tightening. We also introduced the fractionated skin resurfacing part of the technology. And then in the last 12 months, we introduced the intensive microneedling. I first heard a lecture by Professor Tony Chu in 2007 comparing um, fractionated 
um, resurfacing using microneedling, comparing it to other techniques, and I was very drawn to the long-term results that he was seeing following this. And I'm delighted that you know just using this treatment for one year, we're getting some fantastic results, and I'll be pleased to show you my results shortly. We also have to think from a practitioner point of view, if you look at Cheryl holding the device, it's lightweight, it's easy to use. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. We have a platform that's easy to move around your clinic if you need it to be portable. So do speak to the team over at Aesthetic Care and they can show you the different options available. So what we have now is not just a standalone microneedling device, we have standalone microneedling device that is fused with a radio frequency technology. So you're getting bulk heating, needle lengths that are going up to five millimeters in depth. You're really getting a high intensity treatment with very little downtime. If you look at the patient, she's relatively comfortable. We use topical anesthetic on all of our patients, so we use an LMX ball. We keep that on for five for 30 minutes and the patient's comfortable. So when you're triggering the skin, you're getting needles penetrating the epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis. We can tailor the entire treatment, as well as all three treatments, to the face and the cheeks, the eyes, the neck. So if you just have a look at Cheryl's handpiece now, she's going to demonstrate how the needles are going to come out. How are you doing, Cheryl? Yeah. You can actually tailor make it to wherever you're treating. So the machine tells you you can do from the neck to the face to the going through all layers of the skin and it can treat areas of the body as well so we can now accurately reliably treat areas like the body abdomen for stretch marks so when we brought it in I was very pleased we can treat not just two out of three but we can now treat three out of three indications when I say the third we also have a fractionated technology to treat UV damage so we're very pleased about that and when it comes to what makes the patient consultation very, very streamlined, we have to think about clinical photography. I take a lot of clinical photography using an SLR camera, but the one thing we need to do to set expectations in the clinic is to actually take photography using something even like Vizia skin imaging. I, we take Vizia in absolutely every patient because the one thing that patients forget is how they used to look like one, two, three, four, five, six months ago and even a year ago. And the one device that has got me out of a pickle is actually the Vizia. We can see deep volumetric um, lifting of the skin, but we can also see refinement. Using an UV filter, we can also see collagen stimulation at a much deeper level. The consultation is also key for that whole person's purpose of setting expectations. And that has to be done right from the outset. I would always say to patients, do expect to see your results maximally beneficial at anywhere from three to six months. So we would always bring patients back at six months following their first session. 
So when we look at the different types of radio frequency microneedling technologies out there, one of the key differences, well firstly I want to bring to attention the fully non-insulated needle tip. So we're not just getting the heating right at the end of the needle, we're going to get it all the way through. That's one key angle because you're getting the epidermal heating, the dermal and the hypodermis. Next thing, you're getting a fractionated pulse mode. What does that mean? That means when you hit the trigger, you're not just getting one pulse, you're getting multiple fractionated pulses all within 2.5 seconds of one pulse. So what do you get with that? You're going to get in deep volumetric heating safely. It's going to go wider, but within a confined needle depth. So what does that mean? Bulk heating of the tissues. When we look at the thermal camera study, we're heating approximately 50% of tissue. So again, a fractionated type heating. And when we look at that, we're just seeing a wide extension of the heating more laterally as well. So that's going to give more deeper coagulation, it's going to get wider coagulation, much more longer term results. And that's a very good in vivo slide to actually show exactly where the needle depth goes within the dermis of the skin, which is very targeted and very accurate. It's important to personalize the needle depth according to the tissue type in the face, because what you don't want to do is do too much uh, deep heating, which can potentially cause scarring in the patient. So training is key. So how does it work? We trigger the skin, the patient's very comfortable. What we see is a little bit of erythema, so if you can see on the patient, she's turning a little bit red. But the interesting thing about having uh, needle tips that are fully non-insulated is you also get less pinpoint bruising, less pinpoint bleeding. So if you can see, compared to conventional microneedling, your patient doesn't leave the clinic quite so red. So that's a huge benefit to us because they actually have much less downtime. So in days one to three, you trigger that beautiful wound healing response. All patients leave the clinic saying they feel hot, but they feel tight. So we call that primary wound contraction. Lovely. Following up from that, over days one to 30, you get that extracellular matrix trigger. You're getting the hyaluronic acid, the collagen stimulation, the elastin. You want that because you're triggering the skin from the inside out. It's brilliant. And then over the next three to six months, you're getting that layering of the collagen fibrils and then it matures. So we call that dermal remodeling. Thicker, firmer, smoother, tighter skin. Well, who wouldn't want that? So we can treat it everywhere. And these are come some of our classic indications. We have enough clinical data produced by the teams over in the States. Uh, looking at 100% patient satisfaction, considerable improvement in skin laxity, skin quality improvement, with little or no adverse events. There may be a little bit of redness, but it's surely very quick to subside. Classic examples, the neck. We love treating the lower face and the neck with this for long-term tissue tightening. And this is a beautiful result just after one session. Conventionally, we would suggest three treatments. We carry that out once a month, or maybe once every six weeks over the next three sessions with all patients invited back for follow-up at six months. We book that in, my team would book that in straight away because once the patient walks out the door, you might never get them back. They forget what they look like, so book them in. And I would say that is an exquisite result. One of the things that we see very commonly is acne in our clinic. And following on from acne, what do patients get? They get acne scarring. So we see a lot of positive benefits in even treating young patients, catching it early to trigger off collagen remodeling with minimal downtime with long-term benefits. So this shows a patient satisfaction of up to 95%. The point that I would make with acne scarring is Sometimes two or three treatments is not enough. You may need more sessions, but reassessment is key. So setting the expectation with patients is very, very essential. I would say when choosing your patients, you're really looking for someone who's looking for skin quality improvement, skin refinement improvement, someone with low or little downtime desire in their lives. We always talk about maintenance treatments because that's really important and our maintenance treatment protocol is seeing patients every six months for long-term benefits. You can see that Cheryl has really tailored the treatment for the patient. She's got some uniform erythema, so you know that's a beautiful treatment carried out. 
and the needle lengths can be tapered individually to the areas that we're treating. Looking at the post-treatment recovery, what are we, what are we looking at? We, we do a lot of skin preparation in our patients, so we optimize them with the right skin care. We bring them in potentially one skin cycle later, and that's when we trigger for maximum benefit. Aftercare is key, so we want to use something that's going to minimize redness and erythema. UV protection is compulsory in all patients and skin disinfectant. I will always mention skin disinfectant because we are growing blood. So make sure you have gloves at all times, sterile if possible, and use the best skin disinfectant that you can get. Let me share with you some of our own patient results at Aesthetics. First is the lady who is 55 years old. Now some patients just don't want surgery. Some patients don't want any injectables. This is a great treatment modality for someone who just wants a little bit of lifting, firming, and tightening in her jawline. She's only three months post-treatment, but I'm sure you can identify with the jawline. She's got nice skin contraction of the lower face. In the next six months or so, it's just going to get better. The one thing I would say about clinical photography, it may not demonstrate how thick the skin can be. But when you talk to their patients, the one thing that they do tell you my skin just feels thicker and when we feel their skin it just feels better so and that's a little bit of a close-up on her i just want to also demonstrate that when it comes to the central zone the perioral area you get a beautiful skin refinement that's very hard to get with other treatments for example even with um with injectables and we do a lot of Skin quality improvement, we see a lot of this in the clinic. Someone who just wants better looking skin. So from a regenerative point of view, this gives beautiful results. And again, a youngish patient who is 55. So when it comes to who we select, we really need to ensure that all patients are aware of the longer term results. They're not looking for a quick fix, they're really looking for that long term strengthening of the skin. Now we seem to attract uh, a cohort of patients which I call the golden generation or the golden population. They're a little bit older, they have potentially had their first, maybe even their second facelifting procedure and they just don't want to have anything else. So this is a great patient of ours, she's 77 years old and she's complaining of textural issues and she just wants more tightening. She's already had a facelift, she doesn't want to have another one. So I'm sure you can appreciate it even if somebody is 77 years old, she's had a great response and she feels that her skin is thicker, stronger, firmer. So I always say, don't just judge anyone by their age, trigger them. But we make sure that they're prep, prime, optimized with skin, um, skin conditioning treatments even prior to having the treatment. Perioral lines can be very challenging to treat when we've seen some beautiful results coming in as quick as three to six months time. Another patient of ours who is 78 years old and again she didn't want to have a lifting procedure. She wanted something that was um, filler free. So again a great treatment modality, three treatments each carried out four to six weeks apart and it's important to bring them back in that four to six weeks. And I'm sure you'd agree, she's had a great result from her trigger. Again, here we take photography, not just on static, but get the patient to smile. And that way they can see for themselves how much benefit that they're getting from skin tightening. And the beauty about it is when you take good photography and when you demonstrate with an imaging device, the patients do come back. They want more remodeling, they want more benefit, and they will continue to do better. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm delighted, Cheryl's delighted, our team are delighted that a year on we're seeing some excellent results using the technology in the right patients at the right time, at the right place. The one thing I will say, it is a team effort from introduction of the patient to the clinic, from the treatment to the aftercare to the maintenance, having a team effort to pull the patient together at all times is key. I would like to thank all of you for attending our lecture today. I would like to thank the patient for being very patient and, uh, and Cheryl for doing such a wonderful treatment. And if you have any questions at all, we're here. What's the pre-skin treatment you do before you start the radio treatments? So the question is, what is this pre-skin treatment that we do prior to triggering with radio frequency? 
Well, it can vary on the patient. We always start off with skin care, optimizing a very strategic skin care regime. Even something like a good skin care cleanser with glycolics to start that stimulation process, removing of the dead skin barrier. Vitamin C is a fantastic trigger of new collagen production, so we start that process six weeks before we trigger the patient. Hyaluronic acid is essential for creating a huge moisture content within the tissue because radio frequency is going to look for water. And then finally, SPF. I still am blown away by how many patients do not use regular SPF in the practice. So when we keep all of this key for six weeks pre-treatment, we get a better result. And then finally, retinol at night. Great for regeneration of the skin overnight. So we have five key elements that we introduce six weeks before treatment. Thank you. Anything else? Right, so here's our patient, you know, she's had a very intensive treatment, but can you see how little erythema or redness she has? Cheryl, do you mind asking how she feels? Anywhere that is more sensitive. in terms of uh, treatment that patient they had before, such as injectables? It right. was treatment. For example, if patients they had injectables before, is there any limitation not to use this? So the question is, are there any limitations with somebody who's potentially had injectables? So, so we have a protocol in the clinic. If anybody has had injectables with us, or even externally, we do not treat for a minimum of three weeks. For me, if they've had treatment externally, then I would say six weeks. So that would be one skin cycle. The beauty about these sort of technologies is they don't melt dermophila. So again, it would depend on what type and what brand of dermophila. For example, I use Juvederm at the clinic, so I know that that filler is going to be um, biocompatible to 100 degrees centigrade. With this technology, you're heating that dermis to 65 degrees, so there will be no melting of the filler as such. Does that answer that question? Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Can we have a microphone, please? Thank you. Hi. Sorry, I was just wondering what results have you had on Fitzpatrick Sixes? You said you could use this on all uh, Fitzpatrick, so have you had uh, good results on Fitzpatrick Six? So we're, we're just, so the question is, are we seeing good results with Fitzpatrick Six? Now, we are just starting to receive some new treatments coming in with Fitzpatrick skin types. I'm going to hand over this question to Cheryl, actually, who may have more experience with that. Cheryl, can you assist? We've had some really, in a, in a different clinic to working at Aesthetics, I've worked with this machine for over two years, and I have treated skin type 6, no problem, and in the same way, stimulate the collagen and get me more because it doesn't, there's no color difference, so it doesn't seem that That's right. And, and the one thing that I would say, in your darker skin types, there is a thicker collagen bundle anyway, so we would naturally expect a much more intense result uh, and much more stronger benefit. So we're looking forward to that result to come. Thank you. Anyone else? If you have any further questions, we will all be at the Aesthetic Care stand, and uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.